So yeah, so this is Prince's Park, very important and historic park. This is kind of like the blueprint for the blueprint of what was Central Park in New York. So this park was the brainchild of a man called um, Richard Vaughan Yates, who's memorialised in this, um, again, African symbol. You know, the, uh, the obelisk. You know, the obelisk. Uh, obelisk. Yeah. That's you know, right. Does anyone know obelisk. what the obelisk represents? Obelisk. You know, the erect penis of Horus, isn't it? Oh, I yeah. didn't even know. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got chopped up by Set, and the only part he didn't find was his knob. Yeah, yeah, so that's the reason why the, uh, have the obelisk. But anyway, the reason why I mentioned that is because Richard Vaughan Yates was a merchant who was involved also in the slave economy. In the 1830s, when slavery was abolished, he put in an application for enslaved for compensation. Because, as you may or may not know, when the British was, when the British abolished slavery, we paid compensation to the owners. The enslaved did not receive a penny, but the owners received part of the largest bailout by the British government in history, right until the banking bailout of 2008, when 20 million pounds was given to the owners of the enslaved which in 1836 was about 50, or four, between 40 and 50 percent of the GDP of the country. So almost half the money that was pr produced by the British economy that year mm -hmm. went into paying off these merchants. He put in an application along with his brothers. These are, these are this family, remember I mentioned the Yates family when we were at the glass house? So this was the family, this was the uncle of the man who, uh, I'm sorry, the, the great uncle of the man who built the, um, the glass house. Not just the glass house in Sefton Park, but also the glass house up in Stanley Park, he paid for both of them. And his brother put in a, a, a claim for the 2000, and he put in a minor claim, but he got knocked back because he was just a mortgagor. The mortgagee got the compensation. So you could take out mortgages on people. So, you know, in, Af in, in, in Jamaica, if you had enslaved people, you could go to a bank or to a, to a merchant, but private banks usually in those days, and say, listen, I own 20 people. Give me sort, you know, give me a loan not based on, on on these twenty people. And if you fork out, if you didn't pay your, your you know your uh, your mortgage, they take them. So we put in an application, but it got knocked back, and the money went to the mortgagee. Um, and this was quite common. You see, lots of people putting in claims for, for enslaved people that they have an interest in, meaning they've got a loan, you know, they've got a, um, a charge on them. And that was that's that's slavery, you know. And if you look on here, it says the enlightened philanthropist and founder of Prince's Park. Enlightened philanthropists see that all the time. These merchants who are buying and selling enslaved people, using their money for charitable reasons, so they decide to refer to them as philanthropists. But when he when he set up this park, it wasn't just to provide everyday people with access to green space. It was also a business because he built the park to attract people to come to this part of Liverpool. And what he would do is he built the park and then would sell off the land around the park to kind of make his profit. This never worked, worked really well. During this period, in the 1840s, there was a crash in this country. And so it took a while for the sites to, take, to, to be purchased. To be, uh, purchased. So he didn't make a lot of money off it. And he died in the 1850s. But what's interesting about this park and what makes it really important is this was the basis for Birkenhead Park. And Birkenhead Park was the first totally pu uh, public park in the country. So this was a park that was set, built by the corporation and had, everyone had access to it. Although Richard Vaughan Yates, this was a private park, he allowed the area around the lake or the areas that's around the lake to be accessed by everyone just the area around the lake had gates around it and only the people who owned houses around the park could go into that area that surrounded the lake but the rest of it was public and it was this idea and the gardener who designed this park that went over to Birkenhead Park and then set up the first, private, uh, first public park anywhere in the country which then would be the, uh, the blueprint for Central Park in, in, in New York which again was built on, a, on an African vi on a, on a, on a, on an African village. They moved all the black people out in order to build the park. Cool.